Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel. Note, it's not the Apostle Peter's My Gospel. It's not the Apostle John's My Gospel. It's not the Apostle James' My Gospel. And it's not the Lord Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry my gospel. That gospel was only given by the Lord Jesus Christ to our Apostle Paul to give to us. And he calls it his own three times in the Bible. And that my gospel is only found in Paul's writings. You're not going to find it in James's writings. You're not going to find it in John's writings. You're not going to find it in Peter's writings. And the reason why you're not going to find it in their writings because the gospel of the uncircumcision was not committed to them. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7, 8, and 9. The gospel of the circumcision was committed to them, and that means, on the authority of the Bible, that Peter, James, and John are only going to go to the circumcision with the gospel of the kingdom, because the gospel of the kingdom requires circumcision. Paul's my gospel is only to the uncircumcised in heart and ears and the heathen. And that's why he calls it his own because he does not go where Jesus was named. Okay? That would be Peter's crowd. That would be James's crowd. That would be John's crowd. And so take note that when you are a Bible believer, which this station is dedicated to Bible-believing Christianity, and you can only believe God's perfectly preserved word, which is the 1769 King James Bible, not the 1611, because the 1611, there are hundreds of different 1611s, but there's only one 1769. And so... We stand on the 1769 King James Bible. We believe it as it stands. We don't correct it like R.C. Sproul. We don't Greek it like John MacArthur and Spyro Zodahides. We believe it as it stands. And because we do, we are different than most so-called Christians. And because we believe that Jesus Christ gave the Apostle Paul a different message than that of the Twelve, than that of Peter, James, and John, than that of Israel, and than that of the earthly kingdom. And that message is called, Romans 16.25, the revelation of the mystery, okay, which most denominational, non-denominational places do not teach or preach at all. And that is what we are to teach and preach today in the dispensation of the grace of God. That is, if you've heard of it, Ephesians chapter 3. If you are in one of these denominational, non-denominational places, you will not have heard of the dispensation of grace. You will not have heard of the revelation of the mystery. And you will not have heard of studying to show yourself approved unto God and rightly dividing the word of truth. And therefore... When you come to this station for the first time from your denominational, non-denominational place, you will think, I am teaching heresy. But in reality, they are because they say they are Israel. They say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is New Testament. And they say all the promises in the Bible are for you. And that couldn't be more heretical than Benny Hinn. Okay? And so... When you teach and preach the Bible literally, when you have a King James Bible, the 1769, when it's perfect, when you understand that our apostle that we have to follow today is the Apostle Paul. It's not Peter, James, and John. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry because the Lord gave the Apostle Paul a different message. And his message today are the commandments of the Lord today. 1 Corinthians 14.37. And because of that, we stand in a different place than most so-called Christians. And because we do, 
we have to be that faithful ambassador, not disciple, that God made us to be, that new creature, not born again, and we have to be that minister of reconciliation. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. And so, the gospel of the grace of God is only found in Paul's writings, and it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That is not the gospel of the kingdom. That is the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of the kingdom, Peter preached, and this is what Peter said in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Notice, the gospel of the kingdom is not about being saved. It is about sin being remitted and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. And so, complete two different Two completely different Gospels, two different audiences, one to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to the circumcision, and one to the uncircumcised in heart and ears, the heathen. And so, when you can get that into your skull, then maybe then you can get into your skull that God did perfectly preserve his word. Don't believe the 32 plus seminaries that I have talked about that say the Bible or any translation is only 98% accurate, being that of the King James. And then you might believe that Israel truly is fallen and that the revelation of the mystery in the dispensation of the grace of God is what God is doing today in the but now. And if you can get any of that into your thick skull, then maybe you'll be able to start understanding your Bible. And I'm going to tell you this right now. When you start understanding your Bible, you will then begin to have a different worldview, and you'll begin to say to yourself, what is everybody teaching? Because most are not teaching anything of the Bible. And it is a scary thing when you are mid-Acts, dispensational Pauline and a right divider of your King James 1769 Bible. You will see clearly what God is doing and better yet, you'll see clearly what the devil is doing which most so-called Christians do not. Most so-called Christians are Calvinistic or Arminian in their views and they think God is doing everything. But you and I, as mid acts dispensational Pauline ambassadors of the grace of God, understand that God is seated in heavenly places and the devil is running the world. And that is a completely different worldview, but it's right. Just look around. Just put on the news. Just look at our election. Just look at our so-called churches. Just look at wow right the devil and i don't lift him up and i don't give him glory at all but he's doing a pretty decent job he really is and it's a sad thing not to know that and so as we continue through this study we're going to start a new study and this study is called stepping down and this is what i had to do after and if you have not heard my series yet on Simply Disagree about the letter that I wrote to about 20 leaders at Harvest Bible Chapel in Crystal Lake telling them that they are teaching wrong doctrine. They don't even have a Bible. They're not Pauline. They're not mid-Acts. They're not dispensational. They don't teach anybody to rightly divide nor study. And that, those are the reasons why I left. And when I sent them that letter, they did not want me to leave. My pastor, Greg, said in front of my wife, I think he's saved based on no understanding of 
how a person gets saved. That's just what he said. And when you don't know how a person gets saved, how are you going to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? How are you going to preach the cross? You're not. Okay? And so, after they had rejected my letter, and after my old pastor Joel responded and caused the people to not believe their Bible and believe his allegory, proof texting, spiritualizing, conflation of some translation, I then chose to step down and leave Harvest Translation Chapel in Crystal Lake. And what's amazing is, is this. When you go to a place that claims to be teaching the Bible, okay, there are going to be two ways that they're going to teach you the Bible. One is, they're going to take a verse, and most of the time they take verses out of context. And if you look at the word train, you'll find it three times in the King James Bible. It's 1 Kings 10.2, Proverbs 22.6, and Isaiah 6.1. 1 Kings 10.2, it says, And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices, and very much gold, and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him. All of that was in her heart. And Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Okay, so 1 Kings tells us it's just a train, a very great train that was with camels that bear spices. Okay, and then in Isaiah 6, 1, it was his train that filled the temple. Okay, but in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will do not depart from it. So that is the one and only verse about training somebody. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that is exactly what you get at most denominational, non-denominational -denom places. They will train you a certain way. Okay? If you go to the Baptist seminary, how are they going to train you? Are they going to teach you or are they going to train you? And we're going to go through the word teach in a moment. They are going to train you in the Baptist way. If you go to a Methodist seminary, they're going to train you in the Methodist way. If you go to a Presbyterian seminary. They're going to train you in the Presbyterian way. They are not going to teach you. And when I was at Harvest Translation Chapel in Crystal Lake, they had all kinds of training, not teaching. Okay? Now, when you look at the word teach, there are 108 verses on the word teach in your King James Bible. And here are a few, okay? And I'm not going to go through them all, but I'm going to go through a few to make my point. Leviticus 10.11, and again, we're, we're using Old Testament doctrine for Israel for the definition of the word teach, okay? Leviticus 10.11, And that he may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. Leviticus 14.57, to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Deuteronomy 4.14, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statues and judgments, that you might do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. Deuteronomy 6.1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. 
Deuteronomy 6, 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Deuteronomy 20, 18, That they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 24, 8, Take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Deuteronomy 33, 10, they shall teach Jacob thy judgments, and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee, and a whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. And on and on it goes about teaching. Let's go to Paul and see what he says about teaching. Matthew 28, 19. The Lord Jesus Christ telling his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mark 6, 2, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Mark 6, 34, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep, as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And Paul says, 1 Corinthians 4, 17, For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. He teaches Paul's ways which be in Christ to everyone in every church. Everywhere in every church. 1 Timothy 1.3, And I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. 1 Timothy 4.11, These things command and teach. So teaching... 2 Timothy 2.2 2. And the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Okay, the point I want to make here is this. When you train someone, you train them one way. You show them one way. When you teach, you show them everything. Okay, so if I'm going to teach somebody the Bible, okay, like it said back in Deuteronomy, right? It said to teach them thy statutes, thy judgments, and thy commandments, right? To teach all three. So when you're sitting in your denominational, non-denominational place, are they teaching you all the statutes? Did they teach you all the judgments? Did they teach you all the commandments? Because that's what they're supposed to do. If they're teaching you, they're supposed to teach you everything about God's Word. But they don't. Instead, they train you in a way that only they know. They'll train you as a Baptist. They'll train you as a Methodist. They'll train you as a non-denominational, however they practice that. Worship for 45 minutes, which is completely wrong. Singing mixed up doctrinal songs. Mixing the tithe with giving as you purpose in the heart, which is wrong. Paul says to teach them no other doctrine, but most of these places mix the doctrines of the Bible. Why? Because they have not taught you, they trained you. 
And so when you come across a person that has been trained at a place that they call a church, and you're trying to teach them everything about Christianity, not just being a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or a Roman Catholic, they will give you such a hard time. They will not listen to you. When you teach them why there are so many different denominations, when you teach them all the different translations of the Bible, when you teach them all the different positions that people take when the church, the body of Christ, starts, when you teach them that there's 12 baptisms in their Bible, when you teach them the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament and the revelation of the mystery, when you teach them that the Old Testament was only given to Israel and the New Testament was only given to Israel, never anyone else, when you teach them that the New Testament starts when Jesus Christ dies on the cross for Israel and not before, that's teaching, not training. When you teach people that today you have not communitive service to the Lord, but personal service to the Lord, you are teaching them. When you teach them that our Apostle Paul has the direct orders for us, the Church, the Body of Christ, not Peter, James, and John, that's teaching them. When you teach people that baptism does not mean water, and water does not mean baptism. It means what you are immersed in. Then you're teaching them. When you teach them that sound doctrine is only in Paul's writings, then you are teaching them. When you teach them that all the information for the body of Christ is given by the Apostle Paul, then you're teaching them. When you teach them that you have to rightly divide the word of truth, you have to keep Israel separate from the body of Christ. You have to keep the mystery separate from prophecy. You have to keep God's kingdom program separate from God's mystery program. Then you are teaching them, not training. And then they can actually take part in Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Well, they'll, where they'll give an account of themselves before the Lord Jesus Christ. Not given an account to their pastor. I'm sorry, Romans 14, 12. And so when you go to Romans 14, 12, then, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. How can you give yourself an account to God when they are training you that they will give an account for your soul, like it says in Hebrews? And the only reason why you believe them is because you've been trained to believe that, not taught. You have not been taught that the book of Hebrews is for the Hebrews, not us today in the dispensation of grace. And so, as we continue through our study, of stepping down, we are going to go through the questions that the elder, Elder John, at Harvest Bible Chapel in Crystal Lake asked me after I gave them the letter entitled Simply Disagree. You will be amazed at the amount of ignorance that these people have and how blinded they are by the devil, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, to the gospel of the grace of God. It amazes me every day when I begin to preach and teach the Bible to someone who claims to know the Bible and they know nothing about their Bible because the devil has trained them a certain way they have not been taught. Thanks again for listening. Don't forget to check out my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com you can ask any doctrinal questions on the contact page. And also, if you have people that are trying to learn and understand their Bible, let people know about my site and have them subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned for part two of Stepping Down.